मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड आई एम रियली वेरी थैंकफुल टू रामायण कॉलेज एंड लंडन हब्स फॉर गिविंग मी एन एक्सीलेंट एक्सीलेंट अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरेक्ट विद सच लर्निंग ऑडियंस द टॉपिक इन दिस थर्ड सीरीज इज बेसिक रिव्यू केमिस्ट्री इन इंडियन माय सर डॉक्टर हिमान शोदा आप सभी ने साइंटिस्ट की इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फिजिकल मेडिसिन एंड लाइफ साइंसेस व्हिच इज अ प्रीमियर Uh, life science institute in the area in the state of defense and by the qualification and phd so now let us learn about the radiation and radiation so we all know that the the two uh, quite classification of the sources of radioactivity uh, the first uh, source are called natural source natural sources like uh, fossil fuels and the radioactive natural radioactive we know that the core of the earth contain radioactive materials so definitely we get a background radiation uh, 24 hours by 7 so these are called natural radioactive apart them there are man made sources which constitute the type 2 which contain the two sub categories one is plant categories plant so uh, plant sources plant uh, exposures means that which are basically occupational in nature let's like for example medical x-rays like nuclear medicines that is a very active or very active therapy and diagnosis apart them uh, there is unplanned scenarios also uh, for example there is any conflict or any formation uh, of nuclear nukes is called as a fallout then uh, this can see or any other surface uh, There is a uh, where it involves in the failure of the system. These are called unplanned sources or any any accident, for example, in a any activity during the manipulation of energy during the nuclear plant. So this constitutes the unplanned exposure of the radiation. But one thing is very common is the radioactivity uh, comes in direct contact with human beings. Then they are going to affect the environment. of the system uh, biomolecules basically are got uh, three types dna protein and DNA. so in this uh, uh, in this uh, lecture uh, in the part 2 i'm going just going to discuss about the uh, effect of radiation on the how the radiation cause oxidative damage now we know that uh, in the cell dna is a very important integrity Uh, and uh, it is basically the storehouse of all the information uh, main vector so if you are being called compromise then all cellular function that like the transmission of cell death and if the cell death is prominent it is very very effective then it will to issue this function and it will make the Uh, if not not sufficient medical attention provided to the living and organs in the world is a uh, quite uh, uh, consequence of uh, such exposure at the time uh, the victims died uh, after this exposure that is why this is a cause of concern that we should avoid we should uh, stay away from the radioactivity and if we have to face a radioactivity then We need to have a proper protection. Uh, like for example, those who work in nuclear industries, yes, uh, they must. Uh, they have a certain guideline. They have to be adhere to uh, in order to uh, perform their task with full safety from the job. Now, what is radiation chemistry? This is a very interesting topic. So, during a post radiation, I have to call in radiation. It's often confuse me. With nuclear chemistry, that how radiation chemistry and nuclear chemistry is. So basically, in radiation chemistry is the uh, uh, discipline of uh, subdiscipline of chemistry that uh, essentially study the chemical effect of that. What type of chemical effects can be taken when the metal is added? So that is the basic reason. So high energy radiation, which uh, include both the electromagnetic radiation, like X-rays, gamma rays, and other particles, 
alpha, beta, electron, proton, and neutrons. So they constitute both the high energy radiation. Then radiation chemistry should not be confused with radio chemistry, which deals with the chemistry of radioactive elements, or with nuclear chemistry, which only concerned with the nuclear transformation. That how one uh, radioactive nuclear convert into another stable or unstable nuclear. That is the that is the main concern with the nuclear transformation. So that is called nuclear chemistry. Then it there is one another topic which is called photochemistry. We also distinguish from photochemistry because in photochemistry it covers the chemical effect of light, especially the ultraviolet light, which is not considered ionizing in nature. That is a very very uh, typical uh, distinction between the UV radiation exposures and the exposure from X. Actually, it's ionizing in nature, but UV rays are not. The boundary is not very sharp and can be taken as an energy of most finely, firmly bound outer electrons, where the energy level is 30 electron volts or somewhere around 5 into 10 to 18 joules per molecule, corresponding to a variant of 40 nanometer in the vacuum of of energy radiation, if you talk about the energy of a gamma photon, it is in mega electron volts. So, there is a big difference in the energy level of uh, uh, the, the involvement of the photons. So, this is a quite uh, you know distinctive in nature that radiation chemistry is different from radio chemistry, nuclear chemistry. So, uh, our Learned audience must understand the difference in these four and four subdisciplines of chemistry. The radiation chemistry deals with the chemical effect of radiation, then radio chemistry deals with the chemistry of radioactive element, nuclear chemistry only deals with the transformation, and four chemistry deals with the chemical effect of light. So now we are moving toward the next slide. So, what is the fundamental studies? Are, chemistry, uh, are, are placed in the radiation chemistry. So what sort of things we are south in, uh, in this uh, radiation chemistry? So fundamentally, we conduct studies in the radiation chemistry with the aim to identify the various species formed in particular system and to understand the physical processes by which they are. So that is the main objective of conducting any radiation chemistry. So uh, from the uh, book of, you know, wonderful book is called Eric J. Hall, the radiation biology for the, uh, by the Eric J. Hall. Uh, if, it, if you have a, a time, then you must go and read it in the library. This book typically says, that energy radiation of the city of Putin. One is electromagnetic radiation. We know that what is electromagnetic radiation because it is being taught to us since class 11. It is basically a wave part of the uh, radiation. Radio wave, microwave, infrared, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. So this is basically, they, they, in the, they represent a spectra of electromagnetic spectrum. But Whereas the gamma rays and the X rays are concerned, the photon uh, energy is very, very high as compared to the radio wave, microwave, infrared, and ultraviolet. So, therefore, those who are uh, you know, study the effect of radio waves, microwaves, they are not considered energy in nature. But as far as the X ray and gamma rays are concerned, the energy level is so, so high, so they are considered to be energy in Nature. We can see from this uh, from this figure also that as you move from from a radio wave to gamma rays, the wavelength decreases, then the frequency increases, and we know that the energy of photon directly corresponds to the frequency. So the energy of the photon increases. And the, in the case of gamma, it is meter. So we can see that that this energy is quite sufficiently high 
to cause any kind of pollution or any chemical handling which come in contact with this radiation. Then there is another type, that type of ion radiation, which is called particulate radiation. Here, the main entity is particle electro photons, alpha particles, beta particles, neutrons, and heavy charge ions. So they are basically constituted. They, they are also ion radiation because they contain the energy. So what we do, they deposit the energy through uh, in the medium through which they are they pass on. After the if the energy deposition is quite high, that is able to uh, you know cross the activation barrier, then they cause rupture in the bond. And we know that the chemistry works on the principle of structure activity relationship. So if the stuck they cause some structural modification or some lesion in the structure, then the function of the, uh, that structure got compromised or altered, or it becomes non-functional in nature. So that is the main uh, you know philosophy of how the energy relation cause damage in the biological system. Now <clears throat> Quite often, the you know somebody may ask, what is the what are the first process processes take place when an ionizing radiation interact with the matter? This is a fundamental question that you must ask before proceeding further. Now, when the matter interact with ionizing radiation, then depending upon the amount of energy transferred to the ionizing radiation that dissipate by the three means. First is mean is called excitation, where the amount of energy absorbed raise an electron in an atom or molecule to a high energy level without ejecting it. That is a typical case normally observed during the exposure to ultraviolet rays. Therefore, in my previous slide, I have already told you that ultraviolet rays are not anything in nature because they simply raise the energy level of the electron, but they are not sufficiently, the energy is not sufficient enough to eject the electron out of the atom or molecule. But during the excitation, there are certain chemical changes take place, uh, which lead to the you know some biological changes, and that is why we normally term that ultra that, that direct exposure to ultraviolet rays for a long time lead to biological changes, especially in skin. Then the another part is ionization. The second mean is ionization, which occurs when the absorbed radiation has enough energy to eject one or more orbital electron from the atom or molecules. So typical example, as I told you, that is simply the axis in gamma rays. So in this figure, we can see clearly that the energy or a photon of energy interacts with the orbital electron. Then the energy that the, uh, it, it deposit the energy to the electron after overcoming the binding energy, this uh, uh, electron eject out, eject out, and therefore it lead to the ionization. <coughs> Thermal transfer is also uh, the one of the mean where a dose of 10 k of four mean 10,000 gray would be required to produce the significant thermal effect. But this 10,000 gray is normally a not a case during any you know it is as a case maybe you can ob observe in during a nu nuclear detonation but in other other radi radiation scenario you will not be for possible to find an exposure equivalent to 10th and 4 days so to us thermal transfer is not very relevant okay uh, let's move to the next slide so now the interaction of gamma rays with medi with the matter is in term of ionization when a gamma or x rays is interact with matter it is only possible in three ways photoelectric defect quantum scattering and the pair direction so now i am going to discuss about the subtypes of the the 
thus ionization when the ionization when the when ionizing radiation interact with the metal so uh, what happened in the photoelectric effect we know and it is being taught to us since class 11 that what is photoelectric effect but now let us discuss this photoelectric effect in the reference of radiation express so what happen uh, a low energy photon transfer all of its energy to, to a tightly bound inner electron of an atom inner electron it mean that it is not a outermost shell uh, electron it is a in a tightly bound inner electron then what is the end result of the total absorption of incident photon energy is that a production of high energy photon so what this incident proton do when it uh, traveling and it passing on the energy then the binding energy of this electron is got overcome by the absorbed energy and the x then to give the excess energy this ejected photo electron is it taught as a carry it like that it fuses the excess energy as a kinetic energy that is we know that no? e is equal to uh, you know kinetic energy is equal to h nu minus binding energy that is a that is a equation for the photoelectric effect so now we know uh, after these uh, you know observation the kinetic energy of the ejected electron will be h nu which is the incident energy minus the binding energy of the electrons 80 percent interaction will be with the tightly bound k shell electron we know that k l m n so this is normally the models we use to understand this effect then there is a vacancy created in the inner shell so then a electron from the outer shell will come to fill up the vacancy and that lead to the emission of a characteristic x ray which is normally called soft excitation in the case of gamma gamma rays high energy gamma rays the photo electrons are emitted mainly in the forward direction but for the low energy photons the emission is at right angle to the incident energy so that is a normally the, the the case oh oh sorry so this i a few form uh, more points which i like to highlight here is that this binding energy is play a very very important role we know that the binding energy depends on the effective shielding constant effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge is mean that mean that that with the uh, the inner shell electrons with the inner shell electrons Uh, effective nuclear charge now effective nuclear charge basically uh, it depends on the atomic number therefore in the case of photoelectric effect the nature of the constituent atom or molecules become very very significant because they depend upon the atomic number. and that is why in the uh, photo when the photoelectric effect is a dominant effect of energy energy uh, of the you know energy uh, process when the energy radiation interact with the matter then it able to distinguish between the two elements and that is what is required during the diagnosis so therefore uh, when you we talk about the x-ray exposure that is how you able to clearly figure it out between the black and white because the differential absorption taking place due to the you no know, because the elements are different elements which constitute the bone and the rest of the mass is are different because in, in bones it is mostly calcium so calcium has different atomic number as compared to the metal which constitute the, the other soft part the hand there are differential absorption of the x ray so this cause a contrasting effect and therefore because of this contrasting effect we able to see 
interacting very clearly with the axial exposure, and that is why it is clearly used it in diabetes. Now let's move to the another process which is called Brompton scrubbing. So relatively very high energy photon, which transfer a portion of energy to one of the loosely held outer electrode. Loosely held. Now I, I will I'll, in my later slide I will explain you what is this loosely held means here. So it it is it transfer it's a portion of energy to one of the loosely held electron which may be a K L M N. So L is a shell. Then the end product is that the scattered less energetic secondary electron and a high energy photon, both of which can cause further ionization. So what it means that the incident in a a photon coming with NN energy, which is tied with a loosely ball electron, transfer a, a, a portion of energy to the electron, which is loosely uh, ball electrons. So now, the binding energy is not a much constant here, it's not a very significant factor here. Then it, then it transfers some of its energy with the remaining energy is scattered, it's scattered in a different direction with low energy. And the ejected electron with its uh, transfer energy eject out and it constitutes a called Crompton recoil electron. So both the scattered photon and the ejected Crompton recoil electrons cause further ionization when inter further with any matter. Now, what is this uh, loosely bond means here? That it is a typically outer shell electron. So binding energy is not a much factor here. So, if binding energy is not a factor here, it means that it is not dependent directly on the effective nuclear charge. So, here the nature of the atom or molecule which constitute a body part is not a matter of concern. Hence, when the gamma interaction is uh, through the Crompton scattering, that in that way, diagnosis is not a major function. It is simply the energy deposition and ionization. So hence, during an event like radiotherapy, we, we try to modulate the frequency of the radiation source in a such a way that, that chromatin scattering is the major dominant process. Because here we don't want to get a contrast effect. We, our purpose is to simply deposit the energy in a particular area and cause the, and cause the ionization decrease or you know reducing the tumor growth fine so let us now move to the pair production pair production is then the energy photon interact directly with the nucleus so here the energy is required is amount is quite high we, we know that the nucleus is very very stable thing especially the stable nucleus so there's a very a high energy requirement then we know that the, the nucleus contain the proton and the neutrons so after the interaction of this uh, this high energy photon with this nucleus, then an electron and a positron eject out. So in a pair production, a high energy photon, more than 1.02 mega electron volt, interact with the electrostatic field of nucleus and get converted into a electron and positron. So this lead to the pair production and where the pair production is very important, it is important during the multi lasers. When the multi lasers or multi ionization is the concern, then you will observe that the pair production is the main cause. And when the pair production is there, then the things are get very complicated, very, very complicated. It is not very easy to understand the damage part. Okay. So, this is what I was talking about in the uh, previous slide. So, when you, uh, what is the probability of interaction of physical uh, interaction of gamma radiation with the matter? So, see, uh, we are more, we are, we are modulating the radiation source in such a way that a up to uh, 0 0.01 to uh, 0.5 mega electron volt, the photoelectric effect are is the dominant effect. So here. The diagnosis is the is a, is, is it is better to use that thing for the diagnosis purposes because it is able to differentiate between the matter. Now in the uh, in this area, 
of like for example with the z of the atom you uh, know effect the nuclear charge is not very high and the energy is high then the crompton effect dominates so this is can we can use in radio therapy but as we know as we can see that z effect is very high energy is very high then the pair production become very very dominant in nature so the things get very very confusing here it lead to multiple lesion multiple products will form and it is not easy for anybody to figure it out the damage and it will affect the further consequences so uh, the th uh, the two things which is very important to understand here the when the in the photon energy is very very less and the z value is very high then the photoelectric interaction dominate when the energy of photon is very high and high z absorbers then pair production is the dominant effect but in the intermediate photon energy all the absorbers you know basically interact through the crompton scattering this is very very important now the next uh, very questions comes uh, when we discuss the radiation chemistry that how the radiation does it affect directly or indirectly so radiation effect either way wise in the direct effect the ionization and the excitation are the two main process by which the uh, the, uh, the ionizing radiation interact with the macromolecule for example let, let's talk in term of the dna so it basically uh, uh, make the, it transfer all its energy to the various bonds of the dna then it causes excitation first and when the excitation is sufficiently high then it leads to the ionization and then we know that if the dna if the structure got altered then the basic function is got change in the indirect effect the radiation first interact with the solvent which surround the macromolecule it causes the radiolysis radiolysis mean that this it lead to the formation of free radicals out of the solvent molecules when the solvent react with the radiation then these secondary electrons or oh sorry sir free radicals they react with the macromolecules like dna protein molecules, and thereby they cause damage in their structure so that's called indirect damage now it all depends upon the energy deposition rate that which effect will dominate so if you talk about high energy deposition or low energy deposition both the effects are uh, are are uh, you know, are supposed to take place but the percentage wise which will dominate or which will not dominate de depends upon the uh, it's uh, a, a factor called linear energy so let us now uh, go first to direct effect so you can see that this is a typical uh, you know, DNA double helical structure. Now, in this uh, the, uh, DNA uh, model, we see that the it is just like a helix. The helix diameter is two nanometer, and we take a four uh, nanometer uh, diameter and we construct a cylinder. We construct a cylindrical object here and this is the typical mathematical models to analyze the DNA now if this uh, uh, photon from the annual radiation they hit this base i mean any, any part of the dna then it directly excites the electrons and then then further cause the ions so it directly depositing the inner but in the case of indirect action, this photon interact with the water molecules which are surrounding the molecules and thereby lead to a free radicals. Normally, in these uh, biological processes, the one of the monotories is hydroxyl radical. So it leads to generation of hydroxyl radical, and then this hydroxyl radical causes further damage. So here the damage is not direct, it is through a intermediate free radicals so this is a radiation chemistry uh, where in the radiation directly interact with the target molecules in the molecules causing ionization and excitation which lead to the biochemical pleasing 
this is known as Barrett effect. So you can see through the uh, uh, through the ways of uh, equation that Rh any molecule any DNA any bond it got excited and then after the excitation it lead to the radiation uh, radical center in the DNA. So I've already told the indirect damage also. The incident photon lead to fast electron, then fast electron lead to the radical sign, then free radical sign lead to chemical changes, and then chemical changes lead to the biological changes. Now, it all depends upon which will dominate. It depends upon the radiation quality. Radiation quality basically decided by a linear energy transfer. Linear energy transfer means that what amount of energy can be deposited in one unit length of the medium through which it passes on. So in the case of a direct effect, when the direct effect is dominated, then the energy is able to deposit large amount of energy in per unit length of the medium through which it passed. So we can see that from here, uh, uh, you can see a, a large number of a star in a particular unit length. You can see a difference. And in the case of low energy transfer, then the uh, unit length of medium is not able to get a sufficient good amount of energy packets. So we can see that here, this uh, particular unit length have two stars where in the high energy, linear energy transfer, the unit length consists of four stars. This is a, a typical uh, representation. This is not actually take this like this. But the, for the sake of representation, I want to make you comprehend that what is the difference between a high energy linear transfer and the low energy linear transfer. So what are the example of high energy linear transfer? Electron, neutron, alpha, they're basically the high energy linear energy transfer, uh, the energy uh, matters. Then the low energy linear energy transfer, gamma rays, X rays are the typical examples. Now, in case of the high energy linear energy transfer, the interaction of radiation with the matter is mostly dominated by the direct effect. While in the case of low energy transfer, the indirect effect is the most prominent one. And as far as the, uh, the literature available suggests that in the gamma radiation exposure or contamination, the indirect effect dominates two by three times more than, than the direct effect. It means somewhere around 67 to 70% is dominated by the indirect effect and around 33 to 30% is direct effect. So this is the basic energy. This is basic philosophy that basically decide the thing. Now, one thing I want to know thing that what thing decide that this radiation or a particular uh, or a particulate matter, particulate particle will ionize. This is a very important question. Now the energy packet size basically decide that is it going to ionize in, in nature or not. So if the photon size is quite good enough that it able to deposit the high amount of energy in a single go, then any, any radiation or a particle is able to ionize. Otherwise it is not non-ionizing in nature. So this is very, very important. So the two things you must know and during the any exposure or contamination is that first thing is that the linear energy transfer and second is the packet size, the energy packet size. So energy packet size and the linear energy transfer decide the effect of the ionizing radiation exposure. Now let's come to the chemistry part since we know that we all love that how the things shape up during such scenarios. So we know that uh, in the cellular part, what is the main constituent? And energy radiation interact with these surrounding water molecules, which lead to the ionization. So we know that if something is got is excited, then it may go for ionization. Ionization lead to a water ion radical and then the electrons or it may revert back to its stable position by losing the energy. But 
the what is normally observed during this linear and low energy linear energy transfer that it lead to the ionization of the surrounding water molecules what is the time scale for such process the time scale is very very small 10 to a minus 16 second or in femtosecond it is 0.1 fem 0.1 femtosecond so this is a very small time scale so normally you cannot observe through any uh, uh, spectroscopic technique like uv or fluorescence because the time scale is very very less so you require a special techniques to to understand the nature that if you want to uh, directly directly observe this processes you require more sophisticated and sensitive buns otherwise they are in that ways through which you can understand the basic uh, uh, periodical chemistry in the case take place in the radio radiolysis of the water now this h2o positive ion is which is called ion radical is a ion or a atom or molecule which is electrically charged as it has lost one its electron then this radical ion are electrically charged radical which is very short lived with a half life of 10 nanosecond and it will decay to form radical so if the time line is 10 nanosecond it means that it can very reactive and it will react with the surrounding molecules now what is the next is the free radical so you know we know that the free radical is any species which is capable of its independent existence and hence we call it free and it contain one or more unpaired electrons so any unpaired electrons is an one that occupies an atomic or molecule or molecular orbital it is different from ions because in free radicals it is the electron deficient species while in ions it is because of uh, the gain or or a loss of any neutral of electron in the and it is a neutrally charged then it is of independent existence while the ions do not exist in the, in, in in independently free electrons are very highly reactive as compared to the ions which are considered considerably less reactive so what is basically the cause when the water molecule excited then it lead to formation of a hydrogen Ion and a hydroxyl ion. Then this ion radical, water ion radical, interact with any other water surrounding uh, surrounding water molecules. Then it lead to the formation of hydronium ion and hydroxyl ion. The electron which are excited during this formation of ion radical interact with the surrounding water molecules and. form a species called solvated electron so you will uh, uh, you will come across with this term solvated electron this is nothing it's a electron which is been ejected uh, 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 formed during the formation of ion radical and it's uh, surrounded by the the water molecules and and, and it is called solvated electron solvated electron if you find any positive h positive That it lead to a hydrogen. So the primary reaction, the primary species which formed when the then uh, after the um, interaction of the primary water molecule with the hydrogen radical and hydroxyl radicals and the solvated electron. So if we see the typical uh, the rate constant values, which are corresponding to somewhere between five. Into ten to nine per mole per second to three into ten to ten mole per mole per second. So basically, it's considered a second order reaction. Like a situation like A plus B gives C plus D. So it's a second order reaction between them. Both the species are basically playing its role in the rate determining step. Time scale again, it is point one to point zero one. Time to second. So this is a very very small time. So in this time scale basically suggests how the how fast are the reaction. That is a very small time. How many reaction can be taken place, and that is why it is called uncontrollable reactions. Are you getting points? So why the we we should afraid of when any radiation react with the water molecules, then it can lead to a uncontrollable release of the chain reactions. then this uh, uh, ion ion radicals this they, they have to have uh, some fate reactions 
or final reactions. So with this hydrogen radicals, even in touch with hydrogen radical, it lead to a hydrogen radicals, which is a dimer, and we know that is it is not very uh, unsafe things. So it is it's a dimerization process. Then solvated electron, when interact with solvated electron in presence of water, then it lead to hydrogen plus hydroxyl radical. Oh, sorry, ion, hydroxyl ion. Again, uh, both the species are not very, very harmful. Then hydroxyl to hydroxyl radical lead to the formation of hydrogen peroxide. So we know that hydrogen peroxide is little bit unstable, but as far as the the radical is concerned, it is not very harmful. Any hydrogen radical and hydroxyl radical will form a water molecule in the recombination. But where is the cause of concern in the fate reaction is that when hydroxyl radical will react with any organic compound. And I'm, I'm, if I'm talking about in terms of organic compounds, it is a biomolecule, the proteins and the things. They are the main question and main concern in life. When hydroxyl radical interact with any organic compound, then you know that they are, they are the, the carbon hydrogen bonds. Then this carbon hydrogen bond got break down and it leads to the formation of a radical center plus water molecules. Therefore, this radical center becomes a major cause of concern. Here, this process again takes place uh, with a a rate constant value of 5 into 10 to 9 per mole per second. So the rate the constant value is very high. Time scale is still very, very high. It is somewhere around uh, 1,000 femtoseconds. So again, this is, the time scale is very high. So because of this radical transfer process, this radical transfer process, this ionizing region plays harmful effect in the macro. So this is the cause of concern for us. Now, let's talk about the secondary reaction, secondary radical reaction, that what happened in the radiation chemistry of water. This hydrogen radical and the hydroxyl radicals, when they combine, they form water. This solvable electron, when react with the hydrogen radical, then it leads to the formation of hydroxyl radical. Then hydrogen positive ion react with the hydroxyl ion, then it leads to formation of water. And solvable electron react with this. Sorry, I'm sorry. Let's go back to one more slide. So solvable electron when react with hydrogen peroxide, then it leads to the Hydroxyl radical and hydroxyl. So now again, this in this slide, this is the most uh, in a concerned one reaction, concerned reaction for us, because in all the above three reactions, water, hydroxyl, and and water is not a concern at all. But hydroxyl radical is a concern for us because again, radical is very reactive independent distance and can cause subsequent uh, fluidical reactions. So therefore, the, solid, the interaction of solvate electron with the hydrogen peroxide is a major concern for us. Now, we have also, uh, uh, you know, heard or listened or read about the effect of oxygen radiation therapies. Then we know that the, if, the, if you provide more radiation oxygen during the radiation therapy, then it caused more damage of the, the cancer, uh, the tumor part. This is called radi uh, the oxygen effects. So why oxygen is very, very important? So if the solubility electron in presence of oxygen, then it leads to generation of a, a, a super reactive radical, which is called super oxide radical. This super oxide radical is basically very notorious in case of protein damage. It causes uh, uh, very much damage in the protein and when the oxygen comes into the uh, picture. Then this hydrogen radical, when they act with the, the oxygen, then it leads to the formation of hydroxy peroxy peroxyl radical. Again, this is a 
very unstable very reactive and it caused a lot of damage in dna and proteins so this is a cause of concern for us and this hydroxyl hydroperoxy radical again subsequently undergo a undergo a reaction to form superoxide radicals with a pk value of 4.7 so again this this basically shows that this superoxide radical is going to cause much damage when you uh, allow the oxygen to be at the place during the radiolysis then again there is one more factor is that uh, our body system contain carbonate car uh, carbonate carbon dioxide cycle where it mean that the hydroxyl radical when combined with the carbon bicarbonate then it lead to the uh, the co2 radical and water then this co2 radical again react with oxygen to form co2 gas and superoxide radical so this superoxide radical basically is the most notorious one in the oxygen effect so the oxygen can modify the reaction by enabling the reaction of other radical species with greater stability and longer lifetime this oxygen effect is more pronounced for low lt and decrease with the increasing lt so we know that in, in the in the high energy linear energy transfer the red excitation and ionization is the main process so their oxygen has nothing to play more its significant role while in case of the linear low energy linear energy transfer we know that the radicals are the more prominent uh, uh, you know species and hence the oxygen reaction with these radicals and, and and lead to the formation of greater stability in longer lifetimes radicals is the effect that lead to the oxygen effect yeah so if i have to sum, uh, summarize this uh, radiolysis of water then the water which is surrounding the biomolecules interact with the ionizing radiation and lead to the formation of these species hydroxyl radical solvated electron hydrogen radical superoxide radical in case of oxygen hydrogen peroxide and water so uh, which mean that the this hydroxyl radical superoxide radicals are the are the one which going to get, cause more more damage then the radiation quality and the radical if you have to understand this uh, the significance of this slide then the probability of a particular reaction occurring depends on the special distribution of the radical and hence the lt of the reaction so if the hydroxyl radical combined with hydroxyl radical it lead to hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen radical when they act with a hydrogen radical it lead to the formation of h2 so it's less likely with the low lt and more likely with the high lt now uh, if you concern with the gamma gamma radiation exposure and the x ray exposure then the hydroxyl radical is the most notorious radical that cause the biological damage most notorious and uh, in case of oxygen it is superoxyl radical or hydroxyl peroxyl radical that cause the higher damage in the molecules well, let us uh, in the next slide we going to uh, okay before towards understanding the basic chemistry and addition substitution and how they are involved in the damage that is how we have to quantify these the uh, the concentration of these radicals so we quanti uh, quantified these radicals in the form of gbl so in photochemistry the yield of a photochemical reaction is expressed as the quantum yield which means that the ratio of the Uh, number of molecules which divided by the number of quanta absorbed so this is the basically the ratio of formula we use to quantify the quantum yield in a photochemistry which is a number of molecules of molecules divided by the number of quanta so basically it's, it, it is one of the way to quantify the reaction in radiation chemistry the energy of the <coughs> photon or the particle exceed the binding energy of an electron which normally more than 30 newton volts <coughs> and a high energy quantum example a cobalt 60 gamma quantum 
which are energy of equivalent to 1.3 to mega Newton volt can no longer be absorbed by one signal. <coughs> so nevertheless, it is useful to define a similar quality. The ratio of number of molecules formed in an electric sample to the amount of energy deposited in it. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> This is called G value and it is expressed in the units molecules per number of electron volt, which is equivalent to 1.036 10 power 7 volt per joule in SI unit. So, a typical experiment, this is a different example from a, a data. So, if you allow the Covalsity gamma radiation, and if you wish to amplify these free radicals, hydroxyl radical, hydrogen radical, solubility electron, peroxyl radical, superoxyl radical, and hydrogen in G values, which is number of species per 100 different volt. So, what, what are their G values in respect to different conditions? For example, if the nitrogen is the case, then we can see that the Highest G value is what's called hydroxyl radical and the solubility electrons. So if you convert the nitrogen into N2O, now with the little bit portion of the oxygen, then hydroxyl radical G value increased almost to twice than then that, you know, that the value in the case of the presence of nitrogen. And the other values are remained least affected. Although the solubility electrons G value become almost insignificant in case of N2O. In case of N2O and oxygen, the hydroxyl radical remain to a level of 5.4, which is almost twice that of nitrogen. But here, the G value of hydrogen radical, solubility electron, and even the, the G value of hydrogen peroxide become questionable. So there is no significant G value for hydrogen radical and solubility electron. But at the same time, you cannot say about the hydrogen peroxide value, while the other values remain the same. But in presence of oxygen, again the hydroxyl radicals remain significantly high as compared to other. But in that case, superoxyl radicals G values also enhanced and almost equivalent to the hydroxyl radical values. So now this typical experiment, what the conclusion we can derive from this typical uh, experiment is that the in the absence of uh, oxygen, this hydroxyl radical is basically the most notorious one, and especially in the case of oxygen, this hydroxyl radical remain uh, a major uh, a major source of you know radical generator. But with the uh, presence of oxygen, another species come into a dominant role, which is called hydroxyl uh, hydroperoxyl radical and the superoxyl radical. So, because of this is factor that these two radicals, hydroxyl radical and superoxide radical, are the one which uh, cause maximum damage to the biomolecules. So, this is the typical experiment. This uh, uh, paper suggests that it has caused the damage. So, uh, that how this radical uh, interact with this different uh, sub, sub substrate. Now, uh, so we can, I think, uh, we can take little bit breaks and then in the uh, second uh, session of this lecture, we will first understand that how these radicals interact with different substrate and then we will move toward the DNA damage. Okay.